Okay, so I'm not stopping my watch and I'm not stopping for long. I made it up to the summit and it's an hour 27 in. Oh my God, it's really technical. So I'm gonna really watch my footing on the way down and be careful, but woohoo! We made the FKT to the top. Now to get back to the bottom. Okay, bye guys. An FKT is, by definition, a fastest known time. Simple. It's an athlete's ability to go the fastest possible on any given trail. I've done a lot of training to lead up to these different attempts. I do a lot of run training, obviously, a lot of mountain climbs and mountain descents and I also spend a decent amount of time in the gym just making sure that my body is capable of taking the impact of running quickly up a mountain and descending quickly as well. I spend probably about 10 to 12 hours on average every week running at least and in the gym I spend at least two to three hours every week working on my core, my balance, my stability and especially my power. So I was really curious to see what was going to happen and how my body was going to hold up attempting this FKT on Mount Brunswick. I was only 12 days removed from running my first 50 miler at Squamish 50. So I had no idea if it was going to be successful or if I was going to fall apart. I thought, why not just try and, and push myself up this mountain and see what happens? It's T minus 15 minutes and we go. It's not too hot of a day, so I'm only carrying 500 mils of water, which is a little bit risky, seeing it's 15k and going to be at least, Murphy's time is an hour 56, so it's going to be at least a couple hours and a bit. Um, but I'm banking on the fact that there's some liquid in these guys. First ingredient is water, so that works, right? <laughs> <laughs> these are goo liquid gels. So these are what I have used for all of my races. So um, 500 mils, three goo liquid gels, my phone, just in case. You're gonna drink your phone? I'm gonna drink my phone, just in case. Mm -hmm. This is what I've got. Now we have to warm up. I brought along my main training partner, Julia. We have such a good partnership and are able to push each other really well on the mountains and on the trails in our training. We weren't sure how it was going to go, but our plan was to start on the trail together and run together as long as we could. Hey Bryce. Yeah, hey, it's Julia. Um, so I'm about... 2k in and Janelle has dropped me super hard so just I think maybe a couple kilometers into the trail I looked back and she wasn't there but we knew that that was the reality of this FKT I wasn't going to slow myself down she wouldn't have wanted me to slow myself down and we were just both going to run as fast as we could up that mountain and reconnect to run back down the mountain when that time came I made sure that I was really efficient on the lower portions of the trail because you can make up a lot of time um, running up and down the first 5k of the trail. So I just kept my foot on the gas pedal and ran the whole first 5k as strong as I could. You know, you're, you're pushing and pushing and your body's wanting to slow down. You know, you have those thoughts here and there, but the exciting part of the challenge was just ignoring them and pushing and you just say no this is like one shot this is only 14k this is up and down the mountain i'm not stopping i've known about fkts for a while it's always been something that's fascinated me because it forces you to challenge yourself it's you against the mountain Unlike a race setting, you don't have someone to chase. You don't have someone chasing you. You can stop at any given time when it hurts or slow down, but it's you against the clock. So my FKT project has been my opportunity to force myself to work really hard against my own time and push against my own limits with no one else to be accountable to 
but myself. There's a lot of different thoughts around FKTs. Some people think that running up and down a 14K mountain is not really a big deal, or perhaps just a Strava segment. It might be a short distance, but it is a lot of risk. The mountains that we choose to run fast up generally aren't very safe. It's a mountain athlete sport where you're going up against a mountain and it's pretty intense and pretty real out there. You can really hurt yourself and you're putting yourself at big risk to run quickly up and down these mountains. A mountain FKT is running hard up perhaps a shorter distance, but a really intense distance where you're leaving everything out there on the mountain and taking a lot of risks. So Mount Brunswick is a pretty gnarly mountain. It's pretty iconic. It drops off on either side of the mountain and you have to pass a section where if you fell or if you slipped, it's pretty dangerous. So moving across this terrain is pretty technical and it's pretty intense. The rocks are sharp, there's loose shale, there's many portions that are quite tough to run up and down and at, at times with this FKT I was on all fours. Uh, so it took a lot of calculated risks but that's what this is all about. It's the satisfaction of doing something crazy and accomplishing something that you can be pretty proud of. I was able to get up the mountain in about an hour and 27 minutes, which allowed me about an hour and 25 minutes to get back down the mountain in order to take the women's fastest snow time. But it didn't mean I was gonna take the foot off the gas at all. I wanted to see what I could do to put in a time that was respectable and a time that was hard to compete with, because that's what's fun about these FKTs. You want to lay out a time that other people feel challenged and excited to go and attempt themselves. Once we got to the last 5K that was runnable, I just ran as fast as I possibly could to get to that yellow gate and just leave it all out there. I was able to come in just shy of 30 minutes behind Mike Murphy with a time of two hours, 22 minutes, and 16 seconds, cutting off about 30 minutes from the women's previously established time. After Mount Brunswick, I went and was able to establish Mount Harvey's fastest known time. I unfortunately have run out of time this season to take the Lions FKT, 
but I'm really excited next year to come back and see what I can do and see what other FKTs I can establish around the Lower Mainland and around the West Coast. Maybe even travel out to the Rockies, which are where I was born and raised, and see if I can establish some competitive FKTs in the Canadian Rockies as well.